Today we're gonna visit Kronborg Castle in Denmark. This castle is actually better known under a different name. This is Elsinore Castle from Hamlet. Around the year 1600, William Shakespeare wrote a play called The Tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. But most people just call the play Hamlet. I'm really not gonna summarize the play for you. You probably read it in school or watched a Hamlet movie, or maybe you've seen it performed in a theater. The key thing to remember is that Hamlet was Prince of Denmark, and the play took place at a specific castle in Denmark. And that castle is Kronborg Castle. It's a real castle that's one of the most important Renaissance castles in Northern Europe. And it's been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since the year 2000. Kronborg Castle is located in the town of Helsingör. In the play Hamlet, the castle is called Elsinore Castle. And that sounds pretty similar to Helsingör, doesn't it? It would appear that Shakespeare was a brilliant playwright, but research wasn't exactly his strong suit. He probably spent several seconds glancing at a map, where he saw the name Helsingör next to the castle. Alright, here's my castle for Hamlet. Hmm, it appears it's called Helsingör. Ah, the H is probably silent. Let's call it Elsinore. Yep, that's my attempt at a British accent. I'd love to promise you that you're not gonna hear it again ever, but uh, there's a slight chance that I might have to quote Hamlet later in this video, so no promises. Speaking of names, Helsingør is located on the island of Zeeland in Denmark. The name has nothing to do with the province called Zeeland in the Netherlands, and not with New Zealand either. There are many places called Zeeland, and it's not really that surprising. It's just an oxymoron of the words sea and land. Pretty appropriate for flat countries like the Netherlands or Denmark. The Danish name for this island isn't Zeeland, by the way, it's Sjælland, and the origins of that name is a little bit unknown. People speculate that it comes from Old Norse and means something like the Island of Seals. So welcome to Hamlet's castle, located on the Island of Seals, where sea meets land. Hamlet has been performed many times at Kronborg Castle. The first time was in 1816, 200 years after Shakespeare's death. In later years, many top actors have played out Hamlet here. Laurence Olivier, David Tennant and Jude Law in 2009. But of course, there's been many other editions of Hamlet being played out here since then. If you want to see some Hamlet reenactment, you can visit the castle between June and August every year. During that time, the castle is full of actors playing out various scenes from Hamlet. Right now it's spring though, so there aren't that many actors. But don't worry, I've got you covered. To be or not to be is of course the completely wrong quote to use when holding a skull. I'm sure you know that the skull features in a gravedigger scene instead. Alas, poor Yorick! I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. And he had quite a small skull as well. <laughs> the gravedigger scene brings a mix of humor as well as existential discussion into the otherwise quite serious play. The skull is a reminder of the vanity of life, a memento mori, and it serves as symbolism between the duality of life and death. And, of course, it makes Hamlet ponder his own existence and the futility of it all. But this isn't a video about Shakespeare analyses, so let's talk a little bit more about the castle itself as well. In the year 1420, there was a stronghold called Krogen at this location. In Swedish, Krogen actually means the pub, but I don't think it means that in Danish. 
the stronghold controlled access to the Baltic Sea. There was no way to get into the Baltic unless you passed by this point. The stronghold was transformed into a Renaissance castle in the years between 1574 and 1585. The castle was deemed pretty much impregnable. The location was strategically important and it was protected by lots of cannons and fortifications. However, there was a big fire at the castle in 1629, and then in 1658 the Swedes attacked as part of the Dano-Swedish War between 1658 and 1660. During that time, the borders between Denmark and Sweden changed quite a bit. The province of Skåne, also called Scania, had belonged to Denmark for hundreds of years, but now it belonged to Sweden instead. Skåne lies on the other side of this strait, so for the Danes, instead of controlling both sides of the entryway into the Baltic Sea, they now had the enemy right across from Kronborg Castle. The Swedes looted Kronborg in 1658 and they took away a lot of paintings and treasure and even a huge fountain from the courtyard. So this is the fountain that the Swedes carried off. How? <laughs> How did they transport this thing? What can I say? When we Swedes loot, we take away everything, nailed down or not. After the Swedish occupation, Kronborg returned to Danish rule and more fortifications were added. It also served as a prison in the 1700s and up to the 1900s. It was still a magnificent and important castle, but its most significant time must have been around the year 1600, just after its transformation into a massively fortified Renaissance castle. And that was exactly when William Shakespeare wrote Hamlet and needed a suitable location for his play. There's more history surrounding Kronborg Castle. Charlemagne had a paladin, a knight at his court, who was called Holger, or in English, Ogier the Dane. According to Arthurian legend, he was a lover of Morgan Le Fay and was brought to Avalon, but he returned to France to save the country. After many battles and many heroic deeds in foreign lands, he eventually ended up here at Kronborg Castle. He sleeps here, and his beard has grown so long that it extends along the ground, and it's said that if Denmark is ever in peril, he will rise up to save his homeland. It's a pity that he couldn't be ours to wake up when the Swedes attacked the castle though. A mythical warrior could have made quite the difference. The timing of the myth is also a bit off. So he was a paladin of Charlemagne, that was around the year 800, but in 800 AD there wasn't even a stronghold here, so where would he sleep? In the dirt underneath the castle? Maybe he did wake up in 1658 and try to come to the aid of the Danes, he just found that someone had built a big bloody castle on top of him. That was a quick look at Kronborg Castle, also known as Elsinore Castle. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how often.